Morning, OC Youth Online. Welcome back to another edition of Summer Shorts. So what happens is one of the pastors preaches, and then I give a short that relays it and relates it a little bit more towards you guys. So, um, but I got some good news before then. Yeah. Uh, so we have talked about preparations to come back in the building. So pretty excited about that. So here's the details. We're still going to go to church at the park through September. That's the plan. So the next, what, six weeks or so. Then October 4th, we're going to start worship in the building, including youth ministry. But so if it rains in the next six weeks, so normally we're out at the park. If it rains, it's canceled. Everything's done. However, now if it rains, we are going to have a an, the offered 915 service in the church building. There's a couple of restrictions though, not restrictions necessarily, just a couple of rules to follow. If you're in any of the common areas, the bathroom area, the lobby area, things like that, you got to put that mask on. Let's protect other people uh, and stay safe. When you get to your seats, you can take it off. We're going to ask that you actually pop them back on when you sing. We understand the science behind it says when you're singing, that's when a lot of molecules get spit out. Uh, so you start spitting things and, and singing real loud. And uh, so we'll have you throw them on. Hey, God said, make a joyful noise unto the Lord. It doesn't mean that masks are going to stop that. You're still going to sing with all the passion that you have before. So mask on when we sing, take them back off for the message back on when you're in the common areas talking to other people. It's just, uh, we understand that, that we want to get back in the church. We want to love other people. We understand the science a little bit more. And so that is our stipulations as we go back. So if it rains, 9.15 in the building, no youth afterwards. That's kind of canceled if it rains, but we get excited. We get to go back in the building. Now, on August 4th, what happens is we'll have a 9.15 and an 11 o'clock service in the main building. But we will also have OC Youth right here, socially distanced. We'll take out some of the chairs, we'll spread some chairs out. We're gonna be right here at OC Youth 915. All the same things. When we're in the common area, when we're, uh, we're mingling, stuff like that, masks on. And then when we get to our seat, you can take them off. And when Sean and the praise team are raising the roof, worshiping God. We'll ask you to pop them back on because again, that spit molecules just because you're teenagers doesn't mean you ain't got spit molecules. Uh, and so that we understand that the science behind that is a high transition or transaction. Um, you spit a lot. And so, and then you can take it off when I'm preaching and we'll get to small groups, we'll spread out, we'll do all that stuff. Uh, and so there you go, common areas. Uh, we're gonna have you have them on. So. You have to make your choice if you're coming or not. That is that is up to you, but we're going to break out into small groups. It'll still look a little bit different uh, until who knows when. Uh, I can't give you that answer, but I will say that we're making an attempt to get back in the building and get back together in small groups. So with that said, let's get in today. Pastor Mike just started a brand new series called My God. And the idea behind My God is the idea that you and I, we make something our God. Uh, something in this world is our God. Whether you believe it or not, uh, something we worship. And it might be a YouTube person that you just can't live without seeing their next video. It might be, uh, it might be a job that you're going after. Uh, maybe you're thinking about going to college and I got to have that or a team relationship. Um, there's a lot of things that we worship that take the place of God. And it might only be for a little bit. Um, but we got to be cautious with that. We got to be careful on what we make our God because God is a very jealous God. If you watch Pastor Mike's message, you'll understand that God is jealous. He wants you and him in that relationship. There's nothing in this world that he wants more. And his hope is, is you'd have the same for him. There's nothing you'd want more. You would, you would lay down anything else in this world because God was so much better. A while back we talked about how, um, you know, if your hand causes you sin, your eye causes you sin, you'd be willing to chop it off, pluck it out, because God in the relationship, what he can do for you is so good. What heaven is, is so good that, that nothing on this world, nothing in this earth is worth, is worth trading a relationship with God. It's that good. Uh, a lot of people go, 
Well, you know, there's, there's a lot of things in this earth good, and I agree with you. I agree with you. So today, Pastor Mike talked about the God of me. You and I sometimes can make ourselves God. And, and what I mean by that is you live in a really, really interesting age where you have access to everybody and everything at the fingertips of a cell phone, a computer, um, digital technology, the internet. You have access to a lot of things and it can be a lot of good things. It can be for learning, it can be for entertainment, it can be for a lot of good things, but you also have some access to things that are kind of broken in this world and pull us away from a relationship with God. Uh, and that, that can be, hey, there's nothing wrong with you taking pictures of yourself and exciting adventures you've gone on. Um, but when we start going, I did this, I won this championship, I have this beautiful face and this great body. I have all of these things. I've done all the work to do and get where I got. I'm going to this school because of all my genius awesomeness. I have this car because I worked really hard. I caution you. Yes, you've done some of the work for it. I agree completely. But what ends up happening is we replace God with those things. I did that. I deserve that. I work for that. But in this world, everything that you can say I did, the world can take away from you pretty quickly. You know, baseball players, we've talked about this before. Baseball players, sports athletes, you can have one injury away from not being able to play again. That car is one person's mistake from being in a scrapyard. That body is one health issue. I mean, we have, we, we've realized that with Sayla and her cancer is one all of a sudden just nothing to your detriment, but all of a sudden your body attacks you and it, it does stuff that you don't want it to do. And all of a sudden we start to realize that things of this world break. And when we put ourselves on a pedestal and, and people don't give us the likes we want or people don't compliment us the way we want or people don't see the way we want, all of a sudden we start feeling bad about ourselves because we've made ourselves God. And unfortunately, you and I can't live up to the standards of God. We might be able to make ourselves feel good for a little while. But unfortunately, we're one writer's block, we're one injury, we're one accident, we're one... Name the list of not being everything that we thought we should be because of our own work. But I tell you what, in a relationship with God, those things, when he's the God of our life, when we do things to please him and honor him, we start seeing that, okay, I'm not doing this thing anymore that I love, but God will replace it with something better, a new passion, a new desire, a new relationship. Um, but that's when he's in control and we're focused on who he is. Unfortunately, sometimes we focus on who we are and who we've made ourselves to be. And all of a sudden, somebody says something negative about our artwork or somebody gives us the wrong critique or you know, maybe you own a business one day and somebody gives you one bad review or an employee makes one stupid mistake and then all of a sudden, everything you've worked for is gone. God says, listen, I'm not gone. I'm never gone. I'm moving you in directions. I want to show you direction. The problem is, is when we see ourselves at God, we will be let down by even ourselves. And then we'll start going, am I not good enough? Am I not worthy enough? Am I not? Am I not? Am I not? When God says, I designed you perfectly beautiful with a desire and a passion. If you keep your eyes on me and you look at our relationship as the most important thing in the world. Stop making yourselves God. I, I, I beg you guys. I beg you guys that don't make the mistakes that I made when I was younger. I thought I was the best thing since sliced bread. I thought I was God. I thought I was invincible. I missed a lot of cues God was pointing me in. A lot of directions that I could have been. I made mistakes that, that set me back in, in my career, set me back in my dating relationship, set me back in a lot of different areas of our life. And you can avoid those if you make God your God. He is a jealous God and he wants what's best for you. But unfortunately, when we chase after those things and not listen, he wants you to have good things. But when we chase after the things first and go, God, you give me this thing instead of God, give me what you want to give me, knowing that he's going to give you something good. He's going to restore you from the bad. He's going to put a hedge of protection around you. He's going to deliver you through trials. He's going to do all of those things. If you understand that, 
your life changes unbelievably. You realize that everything you have is a gift. You start valuing the things of this world around you and you start realizing that if you look at yourself as God, then you open yourselves to everybody else who thinks they're gods too. There can only be one big God. This guy wants to be a bigger God than you. This girl wants to be prettier than you. This guy wants to be a better baseball player than you. And there might be some people that actually overachieve you. If you're thinking you're bigger than everything else, if you're thinking you're God, you're gonna be let down. Let him be God. Let him be God of your life and then you will never be disappointed with the direction in which he takes you. You might go through some valleys, but you go, oh, I had patience in that valley. I had joy in that valley. I had comfort in that valley. I wrestled with God and God revealed things to me that I could never imagine. But to do that, you got to die to yourself. And I'm not saying uh, nothing. You, you got you to gotta go, listen, the God in me has got to die. The God of me has got to die. And the God of the universe needs to dwell in me. He's got to live through me. He's got to lead me and guide me. You got to die to yourself, the Bible says, daily. Take up your cross daily. And what that means is these things of the world, they're going to pass, they're going to get old, they're going to break down. But this God, He needs to be the leader of your life. You'll never be disappointed if you make that decision. And so with that, let's pray. Uh, as we go through this series, we're going to talk about some tough things over the next couple of weeks. The God of science, the God of, there's a couple of ones that I hope it challenges you, but the, one of the first ones for teenagers, the God of me is a big one. Because you guys are jockeying for position. Do they like me? Do they love me? Will they accept me? God made you perfect exactly the way he wanted you. You don't need any other God to lead you. You don't need to let let other people tell you how great or how poor you are because the world is a mean and cruel place, but a God of the universe, Jesus, is a loving God and he wants a relationship with you. He wants to give you that joy, peace, patience, God, all those things. The guy of this Bible, you gotta tear it open. You gotta read it. You gotta be desperate for it. You gotta learn it. You gotta apply it in context. You gotta do all those things. And if you do that, the God of the universe, the God of the universe, You'll have a relationship with him. He can give you so much more than you could ever think. Uh, so let me pray, because it's in his name. God, Jesus' name, you did such an amazing thing. You came to this earth. You died for us. You laid the plot lines of the earth. You created every animal. You gave us dominion over it. You gave us life. You designed us perfectly. Each one of us exactly the way you want us. And yes, different than everybody else. And that's okay to be different because you designed us for different purposes. And so God, help us to understand that. Help us to die. Help that inner me, that inner God die. I know that sounds crazy, but put it Put it to rest and let us find comfort in you. Find comfort in your death and resurrection and let you lead us in life because you will give us so many good things and you will reveal so many beauties that we would never see if we were always in charge of what's going on in here. God, we ask that you just continue to bless us this week as we make preparations to come back to church. And it's in your son's name we pray. And all God's people say, amen. Pip, pip, cheerio. We'll see you next week. Only a couple more to go. Hope to see you soon. Bye.